What's up, everybody? This is Steve Cardi and Nick Scopoletti, and you are tuning in to the Strength Squad podcast. Welcome. Dope, dope, dope episode for you guys today. Uh, we have Mike Fahey on again. Uh, now we have Mike Fahey on post West Side vs. World documentary. It's not quite out yet, but we saw the premiere premiered in the U.S. and it premiered internationally in Australia. So shit is out and ready to rock and yeah. looking good. So we got Mike wait. Fahey on today, guys. He's talking West Side Barbell. He's talking West Side stories. He's talking West Side history. And we're going to talk a little bit about the documentary, too. So dope episode. Before we get started, though, start this thing off the right way with a dad joke. So the right or wrong way, depending <laughs> how you see it. <laughs> so, Nick. <laughs> uh, yeah. But. Why did the old woman fall into the well? <laughs> why? Because she couldn't see that well. <laughs> quick announcements here before we start oh man uh make sure you guys go to all of our social media go uh like us on facebook go like our facebook page follow us on twitter follow us on instagram then follow us to our automobiles boom nailed it go ahead over to our youtube page guys subscribe to that check out all of our dope uh youtube videos this month we have uh one well, last month too we put up a couple couple good videos a bar muscle bar muscle up progression video, pull up progression video, and also a warm up guide. So go check all out all of those new dope videos we put on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, and then make sure you guys go to our iTunes and our Stitcher. Give us a five star view, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and I think that's it for announcements. Oh, and happy birthday to this fucking guy. Who man? The big <laughs> three zero for host Nick Scopoletti. Ah, oh, fuck, man. Ha happy fucking birthday, dude. Thank you, sir. Dirty 30. I mean, this episode is going to air Wednesday. We're recording this Monday, so it's his birthday at 12th. It's not today if you're listening the, to this on the Wednesday, 14th, but you know, either way. Birthday week. Birthday month. <laughs> birthday month. Dude, it's your birthday year. I got year. a fucking tiara I'm going to wear <laughs> to work today. <laughs> He's got it. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen it when we role play. <laughs> oh, one other thing I want to announce too is um, thank you. We recorded this episode at Westside Barbell um, mm. in the back room, in the death room there. The, you know, they're a very private gym. want to thank Tom, uh, who's like Louie's right-hand man. And Louie, too, because we got to spend time with him, and he helped us through a lot of stuff. He uh, just He's there for hours answering everyone's questions that walked in the gym. So we want to thank them for letting us uh, podcast at the at the gym. Yeah, couldn't couldn't be dope. more appreciative of it. We were even like a little like, are you sure? Are you sure this is okay? But, <laughs> um, it, yeah, thank you to that, to the whole crew. Thank you so much. That was um, – never fucking forget that. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great. So. Yeah, that was good stuff. That was a legendary experience. Yeah. Uh, I think it's about time to slide into those DMs, send you guys some news for the week. So, keeping our West Side Barbell a couple of weeks, uh, keeping that alive here. This weekend, next week. Yeah, right. right. West Side guy. Keeping that alive here. Uh, we have a great article by Louis Simmons. Um, it's titled The Transfer of Exercises. It's essentially about uh, accessory work, right? So, uh, the the work and the lifts you do outside of your main lifts. Um, great article on... Um, kind of Louis and his experience and, and what he, especially when he trained, uh, what his like accessory work looked like, yeah. like the figure we rattled off before was in the article, he goes over that w during his training, 20% of his training was like the big lift squat deadlift. And then 80% of his training was the correct accessories that transferred to making him stronger for his sport essentially. So yeah, dope article, check it out. We'll be linking that in the show notes. We'll also link it to our social media. Enter our cars. Enter. <laughs> I don't know if that what? fits there. But. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will present you with Lord Mike Fahey, <laughs> Lord of West Side Barbell. <laughs> Lord Mike Fahey. <laughs> Be right back. God's plan. Want more of the Strength Squad? You can check out all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. 
Also, check us out on YouTube where you can watch all of your favorite Strength Squad videos. Don't forget to leave a five-star review on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher? I just met her. We would like to thank our friends at Plant Warrior Protein, official sponsor of the Strength Squad podcast. Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving, and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. Head over to plantwarrior.co, that's plantwarrior.co, and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase. Mike, you made me look like a fucking child. I know. There were so many people, I think, with the first one, like this comments that were like, they let this guy do it? And I was like, I don't think people realize I'm a fucking giant. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a large person. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, I'm looking right now. I'm like, wow. I'm a large man. Jesus. All right. (laughs) Ready? Ready. Ready. It's for uh, audio syncing. You wouldn't know anything about that. (laughs) There he we go. Puts the mic on. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We are here with Mike Fahey, director of the film West Side vs. the World. Mike, what's up, bro? Not much. <laughs> Mike <laughs> is back. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, oh the headphones. My headphone wire. Sorry, dude. Head went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Great start, guys. <laughs> and Mike is back with us. We're actually podcasting in person. Last time was Skype. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty big episode. So, welcome nah. back, Mike. <laughs> it was on the lower end for us. <laughs> Uh, so just to kind of catch you guys up here, if you didn't see the first episode, uh, first episode, we talked to Mike kind of while the film was in process, the West side versus the world documentary, which is a documentary about West side barbell. When we talked to Mike the first time, the film was kind of in the making, (laughs) just coming out. This is going to be those headphones out of my way. (laughs) (laughs) And now, uh, you see me like doing this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) West side. (laughs) That guy have Tourette's. (laughs) Nope. And now the movie has premiered. It's kind of pretty much almost done. Say mm-hmm. like ninety nine percent like done, right? Yeah, we uh we had a little like sort of sneak peek for yeah, a little, yeah, sneak peek for the uh for the Arnold there. I still only like barely hear myself in one ear. Really? But, uh, yeah. Oh, in one ear? Yeah, it's probably just the way the fucking thing is in there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip one up here. Yeah, yeah. This is what the rappers used to do in the booth. <laughs> um, you actually like would that. know about that. That I wouldn't. I want to copy no, you Mike. Would know about I want to be I like would Mike. Know. I know. That's what I yeah, said. That's, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't get it twisted. I used to record <laughs> rappers and this make guy's beats. got some friend groups, dude. <laughs> yeah. I've hung out with T Pain a few times. Hey. Um, yeah. Florida boys. <laughs> Tallahassee. <laughs> <laughs> really don't shit it. on the 850. No, dude, um, I love that shit. <laughs> really, I love T Pain. All right. So, uh,. <laughs> What did you even just ask me? <laughs> I don't think I asked you anything. <laughs> I asked if you could hear oh, me. No. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we just had a sneak peek for the Arnold. We had uh, three screenings. Um, we, you know, it was an opportunity to show the film to the guys from West Side, and uh, you know, had a lot of like the Kickstarter backers and stuff show up, and just people who were excited. You know, it's the Arnold. A lot of people have made the pilgrimage to their mecca we're here at west side we're in oh, the yeah we're at west side i forgot to mention this that. is what i, I call the dead guy that. room yeah um <laughs> yeah. we're at west side right it's now. usually like the the massage table room but uh so as you can see on the back in the background here these are lifters who have earned their way up on the wall yeah and uh there's only one way to earn your way up on the wall which is to do something phenomenal while you're alive and then to die too young yeah. So, which is crazy. Like, you go to a lot of gyms and it's like pictures of all of the most like successful lifters or people who have come through of notoriety. And like at West Side, it's literally the only way you get your picture up on the wall is if you were a super good and mm-hmm. had records or whatever and then passed away. Yeah. That's literally it. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the men who are up here, there's the guy who started the original West Side Barbell Club of Culver City. Which Damn. inspired Louis, Bill Peanuts West. There's two of his members, Pat Casey, the first man to squat 800, bench 600, and total uh, 2,000. Damn. This is back in like the 60s. Shit. Maybe early 60s. George Friend, who wow. was a just, you know, an all star uh, 
he was a great lifter, but he was also a phenomenal um, Olympic athlete, a thrower. Great uh, he was on the cover of like Sports Illustrated. That's how big of a deal he Damn, was. He was crazy. on the cover of Sports Illustrated, really. Yeah, he that's was. Amazing. He was like a, a a pretty big name. Um, Tom Pellucci back here, first West Side lifter to deadlift eight hundred pounds. Just from Doctor Tom, what did he do? Doctor Tom, I don't know. Is that like uh, an actual doctor? Or was that like a nickname? That was that was sort of like a Doctor Dre type deal. I oh, think. gotcha. No, he he had a, a doctorate. <laughs> oh. I assume. <laughs> I was like, like um, Fred Hatfield. It was either medical or. Academic, I don't know. Yeah. Or Matt Dimmel. <laughs> yeah, about. that's Louis a first all time world record. Uh, 1010 squat back in uh, 1985, yeah, I want to say. Fucked up. Oh my God. How much? Um, what was he? Three? Was he 300? He was, he was Looked probably three, right there. He was probably like 380, 390. <laughs> oh I think he God. got up. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he might have gotten yeah. over four. Yeah, he was big. Uh, Nick Winters, a 700 pound raw bench presser. He Best died. Back I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, Seriously. he's he was an a freak he died uh in the i want to say around like 2012 Real, so he's oh, like recent. fairly recent um and even though he's recent not a whole lot of people know who he is yeah but it's because he he you know was, was so raw. successful for just such a brief window and then died of an enlarged heart actually he was That's only wild. like 28 and then way down here susie benford she's not on the screen there but she died of cancer she was a world record holder uh, 97 pounds. Yeah, she was 97 fucking pounds. What did she yeah. deadlift? Um, I think it was something like 347. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. But like that, dude. it was a long time ago. I fucking that's 97. Wild. Um, that's crazy. You can get lost, Dad. <laughs> There's so, a window back there. My dad's terrible. my dad's coming up trying to trying to <laughs> peek dad's in. Dad's the man. Coach Dad. Coach yeah. Faye. He helped. He helped <laughs> but, me. Uh, dude, your dad's the best. He's like showing everyone around Westside and like telling them how everything works. Yeah, people so think. He, oh shit! Here comes Louie okay everyone freeze act normal <laughs> okay <laughs> so everyone, uh, everyone stare at him out the window yeah oh no this is a <laughs> this is a crazy day man paul childress is here louis here the lights on in here so he can see us there yeah, I he promise is this recording is gonna keep going guys so <laughs> um i'm really fucking nervous i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah <laughs> this, is a, this is a, a really bizarre circumstance Pimples you all can't fear. see what's going on pimple sets fear so just be calm yeah be cool well, Lou knows me. Y'all are the ones who are screwed. Yeah, we would be fucked now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're with you. Actually, it, uh, it's never too late for me to get checked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so, yeah. So, we've had some screenings the last few days. Uh, we have our final one for the Arnold tonight. Um, that's already sold out. Uh, oh, so hell the, yeah. Yeah. So, the support we've gotten has been pretty cool. And the reaction from the old time, like, lifters and stuff who have seen it. Uh, the old guys, Chuck Vogelpool, came to our screening last yeah, night. Yeah, that's dope. He came up and shook my hand afterwards. Well, even the night that we was, went, it was like there were a lot of people there and like a lot of dudes who I'm assuming were all pretty much like the the older or the old school lifters at Westside. Yeah. A lot of guys from there were guys there from like, you know, back in nineteen seventy six when it was just like Louis' basement. Yeah. Uh, that's dope. Yeah. That was the coolest part of it. That was one of the cool my favorite part of the documentary was like the historical side of things. I'm not gonna go into it too much, guys. But yeah, no that, spoilers. that was my personal favorite part to see like when West Side started and how it evolved, like back in the day, like that was the coolest to me. Yeah, I think a lot of people they, it, you know, that was part of. I've always sort of known the story, you know, the the basic outline and plot points and stuff. But that's something that in talking to younger people the last few years, um, and even talking to guys who like have say been at the gym, um, he's just tying his shoes, guys. Sorry. Um, <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Even guys who have been at the gym for a while, that they a lot of them don't know, you know, like when this all really started and how long Louis's been doing it. Yeah, and how long Louis was like an active lifter himself. That's a a part that I think is really cool because a lot of people who you know kind of have their opinions about him, they forget that like he was he was out there doing it himself, like yeah. long before anybody else joined him, and long after he probably should have quote unquote stopped was still doing it. <laughs> yeah, he had a multiple comebacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in his fifties and shit. Yeah. yeah, with records. Yeah, yeah, that's nuts. Um, and then the other thing I was telling you guys the other day too, like just as far as the people knowing or not knowing West Side, I was like basically doing conjugate and when I played football in college, but didn't know what it was until afterwards. Like afterwards, when I started like. West Side became quote unquote more po more popular. I would I was you know reading through like oh shit this is what we did this is two max every days two dynamic days this is what we did in college football, like shit. But I had no idea what that was until like after the fact. 
Yeah, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people would be amazed if they if they really understood the full depth of fuck yeah. How much of what they do comes from West Side? I mean, like, did you drag sleds? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> West Side. Oh yeah, everything it, we did like, is West Side. Bands, chains. Bands, chains, you know, half the exercise variations. Mhm. Uh, you know, all the assistance this assistance work. work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, like absolutely. All came from here. Yeah. The other cool thing too that we were at the premiere the other night. <laughs> this was fun to me. I've never been to a movie where I watched the movie and then left the theater. And when I left the theater, all the characters from the movie were in the lobby <laughs> yeah. outside of the theater. It doesn't happen at the Marvel movies. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't walk out and see fucking Iron Man when you're done watching fucking <laughs> Avengers 5. <Yeah. laughs> Infinity so War. that was pretty dope. And so you, it's interesting being here with you too, dude, because like... <laughs> You've like, like, there's been dudes who trained at Westside who are like asking you questions about <laughs> certain things. You know what I mean? Like, you at this point, mm-hmm. I mean, when we first talked to you, you know, the information and everything you could give us about Westside was invaluable. Even now, though, I mean, this thing's kind of wrapping up. You've been here for a couple of years now. Like, dude, you like know the ins and outs of this thing. Yeah, I've, I, I mean, like, to me, it's a, it's a big sort of honor that they like have allowed me to do this. Mm. Even though in the beginning, it really felt like I like tricked them into letting me do it. (laughs) Uh, But now uh, they have, I guess, just relented to the idea that I'm I'm around and and this is happening. Word. Um, But uh, there's there's. I think very few people who have the understanding of the history across the different generations that I do. I mean, obviously, like Louis does, uh, right? Yeah. But it's really hard to kind of extract that information from him. It yeah. hasn't been recorded anywhere, you know, beyond the sort of methods. And then there's, you know, Tom Barry and just kind of a few of the guys who have been around Louis long enough to hear the stories. Um, but yeah, for for a lot of these guys, I mean, it's not like it's not like all this stuff was like written about in books and. And documented you know, it's like, on your it's, fucking head dude like yeah that's where it all is right now yeah <laughs> you have fucking everything even Pretty, like yeah. the film is amazing and, and shows exactly what you're saying but all this stuff in between all the other shit that you know like when we get to sit down and just ask you random questions like shit that no one else is gonna unless i like talk to you or someone who experienced these things at west side yeah never gonna like never gonna know about all the yeah. like, history of west side which is cool which is crazy yeah, it's a weird. And so thing. what? Since kind of we talked to you last, which was like I, I guess that was kind of like around the beginning to mm-hmm. now. I mean, what were some of the what were, what are some of the the craziest things that you've learned from this place? Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest things that I've learned from this place have been, uh, you know, like one of the first days that I was here. I, I think I've said this to y'all before, but like Louis, one of the things that people don't understand is Louis's like really big into. It's really big into like a lot of sort of Eastern uh, philosophy. And um, he's back in, you know, I think it was back in the early 70s. He, he took like metaphys- uh, metaphysics classes and practiced like internal breathing. And he's very into, you know, martial arts and uh, obviously like the five rings. And he talks about uh, Mushashi all the time and... Um, but one of the one of the first things he said to me, and I didn't understand at all what he meant because it was like the second I was here. But he said, "You know, you can walk through walls if you really want to." And I was, I, I was just like, "All right, you know that, <laughs> okay." Like, and and he just looked at me and was like, "No, really." And he was like, literally, like you can, like he is of the belief that you can walk through that like physical wall right there. I'm going to try. Which sounds crazy, but I think what he really sort of means is that like there's a way to do anything. Like yeah, it, right, it's just right. up to you to unlock it. Um, and then he talked to me a lot about how like when you, when you start to hang out around him a lot and hear him talk a lot and hear his ideas of like perseverance and sort of when it's, when most people quit and whether or not they they know it they're quitting you know like we a lot of times i i think we we get tired of something mm-hmm. and then you look for all of these you look for circumstance to create sort of an easy out for you yeah and you know not to give too much away but like louis broke his back in 1973 for most people if you broke your back you know See, like uh, it's over. It, yeah he it took him years 
It took him from 1973 to about 1975, 1976 to get back into like a real competition form. And most people, you think about it like if you broke your back and I said, it's going to take you three years to get back. And you were like at the height of sort of your athletic career. You would just go, all right, well, I had him. That was my career. But he came back and then almost a decade later, he broke his back again. And, you know, like any other, any other athlete, if you've broken your back multiple times now and you're in your like mid thirties, you would go, okay, I, I can, I better, you know, tone it back. And, you know, maybe I'm a, an amateur hobbyish, you know, lifter now, but he, he was just like, no, that's not a reason to stop. That just means I gotta, you know, it's just another hurdle. And obviously I'm going to come back and to like, understand that that's how he views like everything, you know, you could be like, you know, Louie, you died. And he'd be like, all right, well, that's going to take some time to get through, but I'll get back. <laughs> you know, and he's, and he's literally done that he too. Has died. He has yeah, died. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. So you, and we were kind of talking the other day, you were, you were taking us through the amount of like interview footage you have with uh, like most of the people you did this film with. And mm-hmm. you have something like, I, Louis was the most, right? Yeah. You have something like 15 hours of interview footage with him. Yeah. I mean, what Over for you personally? Like so if we're looking at you personally, Mike mm-hmm. Fahey, the person, how has that 15 hours plus whatever other time you spent with Louie, like what, how has that changed like you as a person? Um, again, it's, it's through this whole thing, that idea of like, I've been kicked out of this gym multiple times. <laughs> they've, they've told me like, leave, you're not allowed back. And yet yeah, y'all, you know, y'all saw them say hi to me and you know like yeah. <laughs> they're like letting us shoot in here right now might like, join that list shortly yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh you know so again and it goes back to like what louis said like you can you can walk through walls like is that wall there or are you just saying it's there so that you don't have to walk through it you know like that that concept extrapolated out to everything else you know there's and y'all know this is like some other stuff that I can't talk about. Like, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> the amount of stuff that I've been through to make this. And it's, you know, it's not just the stuff that West Side's put me through. It's the stuff on, on all fronts and all angles and life events and stuff. The idea that I've been able to withstand all of that and still get this film done. Now I'm like, there's, there's not a challenge. You know, if it literally, if it does not kill me, I can do it. And even if it did kill you, you could probably maybe still do it if that happened. Yeah, I mean, if Louis found a way to come back from death, maybe I, know, I yeah. can too. He's one of those dudes here. You just hear all these things about him and you hear all these stories about him and the things he's gone through and overcome. And the reason he's overcome them is simply what you said, like his mindset about these things, you know. And you kind of like you look at that and then take a look at your life and you're like, yo, like he's fucking right, man. Mm-hmm. Like he's absolutely right. Right. Like all these other things, like these barriers and fences and walls and, and all these these roadblocks that pop up are just because of you. Yeah. That's literally it. Yeah. Just because of you and your mindset. And it's like I went from like before we like knew you and started to really get into this documentary and talking to you deeply about these people and Louis. To me, it was just, oh, man, Louis Simmons is just this hardcore dude who started this gym and this conjugate method. And it's the best way of training. Mm-hmm. My like image of him and Westside went from that to yo this place is this place could change anybody's life yeah him and this place and what it stands for what he stands for could change anybody anyone else's life yeah well and it, and the really interesting thing to me about this whole thing too is just that powerlifting in general to me is like the perfect metaphor for almost anything in life because like you you know guys hear about Westside you hear about Westside and maybe you're like a 15 year old kid and you bench like 135, you know, but you want to bench 225. If I put 225 on the bar, you can't do it. It'll, it'll crush you. You'll get hurt. 225 is a lot because you can only bench 135. Right. You as a human, you as a person, you, as you exist, you can only do what you can do. And then you train and from one week to the next, you might not notice any improvement the improvement might be so small that you can't put on another two and a half 
But over six months, suddenly you look backwards and go like, wow, my, you know, all my lifts moved up, you know, 30 pounds. And over 12 months, they, they might move up 100. And after a couple years, you look back and go like, I could only do 135 back then and now I'm doing 405. I'm the same person. I'm the same thing. And even, you know, I use the example of like a 15 year old. When I started this movie, I was 27. I went to go box squat the first day that I talked to Louie. And he'd already, he'd, you know, back when he still was saying, no, we're not going to do it. I was like, mm, I'm going to try anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but I went and I box squatted just to take a max because I hadn't box squatted in like 10 years. Uh, I'd just done a bunch of kettlebell stuff and I was running like five miles a day. So I was like way smaller. And I couldn't get off of an 18 inch box with 245. And now I've squatted 545. Damn. Like just two and a half years Christ. later. So, and that's as a detrained like guy in my late twenties and now in my early thirties Yeah, without, you know, the, the benefit of all the added testosterone and human growth hormone that comes, you know, from, you know, your, through your teenage years. Yeah. I've done that like all natural as a part-time lifter around the process of yeah. making the movie and to go like, wow, I can still make those kind of those kind of advancements as like not a model athlete and not in the best like time period of my life. Yeah. Right. And to again, apply that to other areas of your life and go like, you can make huge changes. They won't happen fast, but if you can just gradually stack that process, that progress and trust in the process, like you can change anything. So then you go like any hurdle you have. When I started this, I didn't have any money. I, I now we've gotten to the end and I just wrote like, Ron Perlman, a big ass check. And I didn't have that much money. Right. I didn't have any money. I yeah, couldn't, right. I couldn't, I, you know, my student loans were on deferment and stuff. Like I was there, there was a point at which like, you know, you met my girlfriend, Sarah, there was a point where she was literally buying me food because I couldn't, I couldn't buy mm. my card got declined trying to buy a 10 pack of ramen. Shit. That's how bad, you know, things were. Shit, bro. And with no resources, I've now been able to, I had to break it down into so many steps and then conquer each hurdle as, you know, take one big hurdle and turn it into, you know, 50 small hurdles that mm. I could one by one get over. So that's, I guess the, that's like listening to Louie, you know, first I got to get, you know, my knee right. Oh, I got my knee right. Now I got to get my neck right. Okay. Got my neck right. Now I got to gotcha. get my shoulder right. And if I get them all right, I can Put a big number together and then something will break and to again go i could stop now or i could go i fixed it before i'll just fix it again yeah right so other than louis um who has been like and you know we kind of talked a little i don't want you to like give away too much obviously mm -hmm. just you know give what you can other than louis who is kind of your favorite or the most interesting character person through this whole process to talk to um man at this point, I, I, you know, I love talking to almost anyone. There's, there's no one really that, who's been like a bad experience or anything. Um, one of the people who always kind of stands out to me is like Luke Edwards. Cause he's another person in terms of being sort of like Louie, where it's just like, dude, you have every excuse to stop. And you have people all around you, like who pretty much beg you to stop, but he just keeps going. Cause like, it makes sense to him. Um, and then sort of one of the like the, one of the really fun people to talk to was like Mike Jester, who has all the stories in the in the you know movie. He talks about like, you know, showing up there as like a 14 year old kid back in like the 80s and they just treat him like dog shit. <laughs> and he says he says things that are straight up like horrifying, but he's laughing and smiling and stuff. And you're just like, man, if you if you didn't if you didn't take it that way, like that sounds like child abuse. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, oh yeah. I went down to the gym and they beat me up and, you know, yeah. kicked me out and told me to get lost and they kicked me on the way out. And that no shit one... happens here though, man. Yeah. And, like that's, I would even say listening to your story. That's like a, a version of what happened to you when you first got here. It's mm -hmm. not like you got here and they welcomed you with open arms and we're like, yeah, let's do this movie. Like Louie and this gym essentially like, like beat you up quote unquote until they were like, all right, yeah, this dude could hang. 
Yeah, they they <laughs> just you know like, uh, and they literally would do that to lifters at, on some occasions back in the day. <laughs> oh yeah, and a lot of people they don't understand like you know I remember even when I went to say like when I when I spoke to Chuck the first time, uh, and Chuck Chuck barely you know like he was he was literally like trying to get around me to like evade me so i'm like having to like kind of box <laughs> him, him yeah. in and luckily he's he's you know an old kind of beat up chuck now so he doesn't have the the mobility and he can't shift too quick so he couldn't like drop step and spin move on me um but you know there's all these stories especially about chuck where it's like you know guys would be like yeah he he didn't talk to me for a year and even even you know with this he, he came up to me and, and talked to me more after seeing the movie than he'd ever talked to me before and I think a lot of that goes into just for a lot of these guys, like they didn't believe until they saw the movie that the movie would ever get done. They didn't, they didn't believe because I'm not the first person who's ever come here and tried to make a movie. So they, everyone was just, they'd seen so many people come in and get kicked out or come in and get shut down. They, they even, even when it had been, you know, two and a half, three years and I'm inviting them to a premiere, they're like, it can't be real. <laughs> like no way this is happening. something's got to happen like nah it's it's not gonna you know we're gonna show up and he's he's not gonna be there it's you know the theater manager is gonna come out and you know, sorry guys uh <laughs> we're gonna watch the strength squad yeah. podcast instead yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um turns out this was all an elaborate hoax <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Feels like there it. never was a michael Fahey. <laughs> um but uh, it's it's the same thing, and like people think like, oh, that's that's mean or that's rude or something, and it's really it's because, I mean, even while I was here, there were like you know I'd come in and there'd be ten guys, and then I'd come in a couple weeks later and there'd be ten guys, but six of them would be different. And I go, what happened to the other guys? And the four guys who were like always oh, there would be like, oh yeah, him? I don't know. I just haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> and two years later, it's like. I guess he quit. I don't, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are, they're leaving so fast that they don't even say goodbye or they're yeah. afraid to come say goodbye. And so it doesn't, it just doesn't phase Louis. He's seen it so many, a thousand people have come in here. Like literally a thousand people at least have come here and, you know, told everyone, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to lift it West side, have gotten here and, and couldn't cut it. And you're out. And so, it's a it's a really weird thing to have made it this far in. I mean, even I've talked to to Tom Barry still says to me, you know, like you're I can't believe you you like made it in one end and out the other <laughs> here. Like this is we and, you know, they told me at one point we took bets on how long you'd last and no one bet <laughs> over three days. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's gotta feel good though to hear that and be like, fuck man, I like passed this crazy test of making it through West Side. Yeah, I still couldn't like I have no, you know, delusions about like I could not handle being a lifter here. Being a lifter here is still way harder than making a movie about the lifters here. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. You know, it's it's nowhere close, but it it is cool to be like, okay, I I at least got like sort of a taste of that yeah, of that hazing process of guys not wanting to talk to you because they just assumed that you wouldn't last. So I had to just like, you know, there are times where I just had to show up and be like, well, I hope one of these guys starts like opening up a little to me. Or, <laughs> yeah. Right. I hope today he agrees to do an interview. Yeah. Um, the eventually are they're like, shit, you're not going away. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're not going to fucking leave. Are you? Yeah. The lifters are kind of held to like a higher standard here than most of the other athletes. Correct. Like the board and the powerlifting is Louis's life. But like the fighters are just like, I overheard you talking before the fighters are like, like that's Louis, their strength coach, and like the fighting doesn't directly. Like he's not their their jujitsu and sprawling. Yeah, boxing it's coach. a it's a thing of like Louis knows like okay, I can make a fighter strong, and he can still lose the match. Oh, you know, yeah. like that's not on you know Louis. Yeah. Like I'm Shit not in their wrong. corner. There's so I'm many not, factors. Yeah, yeah, I'm not their corner guy. I'm not coming up with their strategy. So it's a different level of of pressure for them. He can you know he can make the, he can do his job, and it doesn't win or lose them the fight. Uh, he can, all he's doing is adding a tool that right. may help them if they use everything else correctly. But when you're one of his lifters, you know, like, and you go to a meet and you bomb out in, in Louis's eyes, it's like, dude, you're, you're wearing West side on your shirt and you just underperformed and that's unacceptable. So you have to, you know, you have to show out even more next time, or you need to start looking for another place. So it's just, yeah, it's a whole different, you know, 
it's it's kind of like how your grandparents, you know, like are probably a lot easier on you. It's because yeah. they yeah. get to go home. So they, <laughs> oh, right, they come right. visit. Say that, they visit, they spoil you. Yeah, yeah. And Mom, then when you yeah. get a bad grade, no, oh, that's, you know, that's your, Are your, that's your mom's fault. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're misbehaving. They just hand you over to their children. They're like, yeah, you, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Take them. These, uh, these are your kids. Last thing I wanted to ask you was because you're a story guy. You just like live your life in stories and they're all good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all great. Like, obviously, again, not wanting to give away too much. What is, like, your favorite story that you could tell, like, mm-hmm. throughout this whole process that you've had? Like, your favorite story. Um, I don't know. My favorite story. Like, from the film? Yeah, this whole process of you coming here and making the film to now. Oh. Um... Well, I'll say at least one that it, something that I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's something that I've thought about a lot the last like few weeks. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but that last uh, one of the last scenes where Hoff is talking about like going over three thousand pounds for the second time, and because Hoff's like Hoff's like my age, right? So I'm I'm only a few months older than Hoff, and he's talking about going over three thousand a second time, and you can see him start like you can see how much that meant to him. And, you know, y'all have met Hoff. Hoff's a pretty, like, silly guy. He likes to joke around a lot. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a Hoff's a character. Kid. But usually usually Hoff's, like, on a pretty high note, you know. Um, and through most of our interviews, that's how he is. He's kind of like the a color commentary guy, you know. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got a lot of jokes Hilarious. and quips on the side. And in that one interview, he uh, you, you kind of see one of those, like, rare glimpses from him of where – you see kind of that because I mean, he's, he's the best in the world at what he does. And you have to think the whole time, like there's gotta be more to him. There's gotta be this really, there's gotta be like that rage and that fuel that, that everything burns on. And you, you see it come out when he talks about like what it took to get there. And that, you know, the first time he did, he was 25 and now he, you know, now he was verging on 30 and was going, you know, it was it was four years of hell. He says I went through four years of hell for five fucking pounds. But in doing that, as hard as it was, and I'm sure I know that for him there were plenty of times where he wanted to quit. That something kept him going, and you know, and obviously I know what it was, but something kept him going. And now that he got it, now that he got, he, and he only got five pounds over. But for him, I think there's like a lot of validation to what he had put his life into up to that point. Because when he hit it the first time, he thought he was just going to keep soaring up. And he got derailed through hip injuries and, you know, just that amount of wear and tear, even though he was so young. Like to get through all the second guessing of like, you know, to be young and be successful and then suddenly struggle when everyone's looking at, you know, everyone tells you you can't do it when you're like in your teens and you say, I'm going to be the best in the world. Everyone tells you, you can't do it. When I was in my teens, I want to make movies and everyone would go, you can't make movies. That's not a real thing. Go get a real job. And then when I was 22, I got the, the reins to edit a theatrical documentary and everyone said, Oh my God, you actually did it. You're going places. And you know, suddenly everyone was acting like you're going to win an Oscar or something. You know, it's a lot of like with that kind of success comes a lot of pressure and like you're young and you're still in your mind thinking like, Am I actually like good at this? Am I actually this thing or did things just kind of fall in place? Right. And, you know, like, even though you did it, you, you wonder like, am I real? And, you know, so he's talking about four years to do that in lifting and simultaneous to, you know, my journey with the film only started like six months after he hit it at 3000. So like simultaneously, I'm going through this journey of making the film and it was only after seeing it. It was only after, you know, watching it back. And I was like, holy shit, like he's talking about me. It's like, he's talking about himself, but I, that's exactly how I feel of like, now I've gotten to the end of doing it again. And now that I've done it again, as hard as it was to do it. Now I'm like, I know that I can do this now. I know that the first time wasn't a fluke. I know that, you know, Everything I've, I've 
believed or thought that I believed about my own abilities, it's all really there. And so that's, again, I don't know if it's my favorite thing, but that's like one of the things that's been most impactful to me and without me anticipating it over the last like about week and a half, especially that, that just popped in my head and every time I see it now and I'm forced to watch it every day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is horrible. Relive the nightmare. <laughs> I, hate, I hate the movie right now. <laughs> I don't want to see it for like 10 more years and I have to watch it again in like four more hours. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'd fucking love to see it again tonight. That'd be fucking amazing. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I you would. can pretend to be me. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Huh. Give you a hoodie and <laughs> we'll just like we'll stack just throw each other. Yeah, the beard. Yeah, yeah we'll stack like each other. I'll sit on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll sit on your shoulders and put a trench coat over We're us. Like fucking yeah. rocking all over the place. Like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mac Faye. Well, dude, it's cool to end people who watched and and listened to the first episode we have you had you on. It's just really cool to like be here now at like after the fact almost. You know, mm. like the movie's been made, it's been done, and we're here talking to you again. And it's just like so cool to to like see where you've come with this where the movie has come with this and it's it's cool to like have seen not as much as you but kind of like seen and and gotten your take on how it's all progressed and yeah. become what it is today yeah yeah it's Which been cool dope. man you've been uh not to get too uh emotional here but you've been a little motivation to us as well like you're our age and you're doing all this fucking yeah, cool shit just like it. just like you just said about people doubting you we all have those feelings yeah and, you know, when people mention, like, oh, you're talking to the uh, director of Westside, what, was he, like, a lifter there, or was he, like, how old? And I was, like, he's uh, my age. He's, mm-hmm. like, 30. Yeah, he's right. 30 years old. Yeah. Which is and awesome. he's just trying to fucking go for it. Yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you for being no, a uh, motivating yeah, factor. Anything else you wanted to ask? Anything you wanted to add? <sighs> You've been kind of quiet over there. I just, I have been. I'm uh, I'm not going to lie. I'll be straight up honest. I'm I'm a little nervous that Louie's here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, while you were telling your story, I heard him in the background like, man, man, 200 yeah, pounds. I was like, I was I'm, like I'm, yes, sta- yes. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm staring at that like, all right, this is it. He's going to walk in. I hope and so. He's gonna, I, first thing I thought of was he's going to smash all his equipment and we're broke. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would be laughing my ass off. <laughs> I'd be okay ending the no, podcast No, I am a little nervous, note. though, because, like, I mean, this whole weekend's been uh, fucking surreal, just mm-hmm. meeting people. I- I've read Louis shit since I was in my dorm room. I spent hours in there reading Louis stuff, Elite FTS, read Dave Tate stuff, reading Jim Weller stuff. And I get to meet them all not one weekend, so my head's kind of a yeah, little... Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's just a little... It's cool. It's cool. A little crazy, but... Yeah, uh, my whole journey's been, like, stepping into, like, stepping out into the internet and into YouTube, and, like, it is Which weird is that I get to talk too. to... Yeah. It's like Tron. It's weird that I'm able to just like jump into like conversations with people, even when I'm at my gym, like back home in Florida and guys will come up to me and they'll be like, yeah, you know, I got this from, I got this from Ed Cohn or I got this from this, you know, so-and-so. And and I'm like, oh yeah, I I know Ed. (laughs) I met them. I'm, you know. So cool, man. So uh, dope. Yeah. And, And the coolest thing too is I would even say, if someone in the future asks me, like, hey, Steve, you know, like, who should I go to to, like, learn the most about, like, just West Side? I would not point them in any other direction besides you. Like, you know, like we were saying before, you know, <laughs> you know more than a lot of the dudes who have lifted here. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, you are, like, this anthology of West Side, like, in your freaking noggin up there. Yeah. I got to fill it with something. <laughs> it is big. West Side knowledge. It's big. This was all your dad's working, man. He, like, he, like, fucking bred you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. A lot up there. A lot of stories up <laughs> yeah. there. All right, guys. Uh, Mike, first man, dude, we're so proud of you, dude. This thing was awesome. Yeah, we're like awesome. glad you're like cool with us and have been like you know with us. This I'm whole not time. actually, like, but <laughs> <laughs> we're all together Just pretending. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, this has been cool to see. Like like Nick was saying, dude, you've been inspiring to like us and and everyone who's watched this. So thanks, brother. And this that fucking movie is amazing. And you guys, everyone listening to this, know it needs to go see that documentary. Like yeah. if you are a fan of West Side or just a fan of lifting powerlifting doesn't matter like you need to go see that movie it was awesome absolutely blame them if you disagree <laughs> if you disagree we don't want to talk to you <laughs> if you disagree <laughs> fuck you <laughs> all right guys thank you so much uh we're gonna run we're gonna out of here real a, fast we're gonna take a quick break and uh when we get back we're gonna wrap it up want more of the strength squad you can check out all of our social media on instagram facebook and twitter also check us out on youtube where you can watch all of your favorite strength squad videos don't forget to leave a five-star review on itunes and stitcher stitcher i just met her we would like to thank our friends at plant warrior protein official sponsor of the strength squad podcast 
Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving, and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. Head over to plantwarrior.co, that's plantwarrior.co, and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase. What's up, guys? Welcome back. That was Mike Fahey. Uh, like we mentioned before in the beginning of the show, amazing opportunity to have not only podcasted at Westside, but just to go there, meet Louie, meet all the lifters there, and uh, just to kind of get together with Mike Fahey again. Yeah. He's uh, just lives his life in stories, and they're all really dope. And yeah. he, he knows more about Westside than... <laughs> I think a lot of people at like Westside do. <laughs> we were when well, we were in that just like quick side story when we were like Louis was sitting there like you know the Yoda of powerlifting and people were just coming into the gym for open gym and asking him all these questions. Um, like Mike would also be like helping like because Louis brilliant, but sometimes the clarification you're just like wait what is that? And Mike breaks it down and he was yeah. just saying things. He was breaking it down so everyone could understand it and no one really kind of knew who he was, which was funny. Like, how do you know so much, man? Are you a coach here? Are you a lifter? Yeah. Mike, and, uh, you know, it's so funny. Mike was exposed to West Side like early on in his life because of his dad. Yeah. Who is a savage. But yes, yes Mr. Fahey. Is don't a get savage. it. Don't get confused, man. Mike Fahey is not just a filmmaker when it comes to when it came to making this film. He is an absolute student of West Side conjugate training of Louis. He's an absolute student and his knowledge shows. So yeah. not only did he make the film, but dude, he knows that place inside and out now. So right. he's a legit dude. Right. Uh, before we go here, guys, we're going to wrap it up with a segment that we called gold, silver, bronze. So we're going to be talking to Mr. Scopoletti over here. <laughs> big birthday boy, big three Oh uh. gold, silver, bronze, bro. <laughs> Top favorite birthdays of all time. Birthday episode. <laughs> all right. Bronze. I think I was 12. Uh, sixth grade, New Rochelle, New York, New Rock City, playing fucking laser tag and pizza. And there was like, it was my first birthday where like there were other, there were girls invited. You know what I mean? Like co ed birthday, usually just be all dudes. Um, so that was, you know, it was hot. And um, <laughs> that, was a, that was a blast. I remember that one. That was definitely my, uh, that was my bronze. Um, that was a great one. And then gold and silver, I was torn on. But I, I think I got it right. So I'm going to give silver to um, my 18th birthday. This I, I, this could have been number one. but So my 18th birthday, uh, my grandmother took all of us to... I went to like... I used to go to like Japanese steakhouses almost every year for my birthday pretty Let's much. Go. So we went to Ito's again in New Rochelle. And it was the like one... It was one of the times where my New York... my I moved from New York to Connecticut right after eighth grade. So my New York friends got to meet up with all my Connecticut friends. We all got to have dinner. You know, Nan paid for it, obviously, because <laughs> we were all 17, 18. Um, Corey was there, past guest. You remember Corey? Past guest, future guest. And Back was there. I mean, all my a lot of guys we've had on, some of the guys we've had on. Um, and they all met for like the first time, really. And we just wrapped my Nan's apartment, did a little beer pong, <laughs> People went fucking fell, went to the golf course she lived on and like fell in the pond. It was just a nuts. It was a nuts time and it was really fun and um, yeah, that was that was super memorable. Oh my god, and uh, gold, gold will have to be just because it's the most recent and it was uh, it was a it was a good time. We had a good crew when Steve and I worked at the uh, the Edge in Fairfield. There was like I think like four of us that had March birthdays. <laughs> and we went to Don Coqui in White Plains, which is a Puerto Rican bar. If you're in the local area, go there, eat the paella. It's fucking amazing. It's so we had so so much fun. So we got there. The owner came to our gym, Renee. He came to our gym. He recognized all of us. You know, got us right into like VIP area and like <laughs> Cos and Pioli got bottle service, which I didn't ask them to do because they're psychos. I don't know why they did that, but very <laughs> nice of them. <laughs> Um, so that happened. It was just a nuts night. Like the ho we got like three hotel rooms. <laughs> they had to like call to make sure we weren't like we were being too loud. They almost kicked us out of the fucking hotel. It was an it was a great 
that was like twenty. That was my twenty. Classic. That was a nuts one. Yeah. It was, so that was two thousand and what? Yeah. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. So I was twenty-seven. That was that was a good one. And it's always I like sharing like the B day with people. It's not about like me. me like there were other March birthdays, so that was just that made it even better. I loved sharing it with everyone. That was uh, that was definitely gold. Without without, yeah, that was gold for sure. We both got blown that night too. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right, guys. So sex with her. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate all your views, all your downloads, all your likes, all your comments, everything, man. Keep it coming. Uh, send some emails too, right? We put our email uh, yeah. addresses in the, in we the, got some, in the show we got notes. A few. We got a yeah, we got a few, but yeah, send them up. We love answering you guys. Love hearing from you guys. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. Happy birthday, Big Dick Nick. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Me, not Nick Foles. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> Bye.